Harlot Castle crowns the sheer rocky crag overlooking the dunes far below. However, during the medieval period, the sea would have come crashing right up to the rocks directly below the castle walls. Against fierce competition from Conwy, Carnarvon and Balmoris, this is probably the most spectacular setting for any of Edward I's castles in Wales. All four are designated as a World Heritage Site. Harlech was completed from ground to battlements in just under seven years under the guidance of gifted architect that I've mentioned before, Master James of St George. Its classic, walls within walls design, makes the most daunting natural defences. Even when it was completely cut off by the rebellion of Madog ap Llewellyn, the castle still held out thanks to the way from the sea. The path of 108 steps rising steeply up the rock face allowed the besieged defenders to be fed and watered by a ship. Its great towers and rugged walls saw one siege after another during some of the most tumultuous and epic times during Welsh history. During the Wars of the Roses, the Lancastrians held the castle, which was surrounded by the immense Yorkist army commanded by William Herbert of Raglan. The poet Huel Duffy told of the men being shattered by the sound of guns. Under this furious onslaught, the castle succumbed in less than a month. Fifty prisoners were taken. These were the heroic men of Harlech, of which the infamous Welsh alternative national anthem sings about. Unless, that is, you believe in the alternative theory. In 1404, the castle fell to the charismatic Prince Owen Glendow during the last major rebellion against the English rule. It became the centre of Glendower's inspiring vision of an independent Wales. He moved his main residence and court here and summoned his followers from all over the country to attend the great parliament. It may well have been Harlech Castle that he was formally crowned Prince of Wales in the presence of envoys from Scotland, France and Spain. But his glory did not last. By 1409, Harlech was besieged by the forces of Harry of Monmouth, who later became known as Henry V, hero of Agincourt and King of England. During the siege, one huge cannon, nicknamed the King's Daughter, burst during the relentless bombardment of the castle walls. Eventually, hungry and exhausted, the garrison fell. Glyndower escaped, although his wife and daughters were captured. 
perhaps these gallant Welsh defenders were the true men of Harley.